As listeners, we want you to understand that the solution of business, tax, and legal issues depends on many factors, including local, state, and federal laws. Listeners' names and questions may be simulated. This show is not intended to offer business, tax, or legal advice, and Spiegel and Utrera PA, its attorneys, and Lawrence J. Spiegel recommend you seek legal advice from an attorney about your specific matter. AmeriLawyer.com presents Start or Expand Your Business Today. There are only two types of people, those in business and those who wish they were. Join Larry Spiegel, entrepreneur, author, and managing shareholder of Spiegel and Utrera PA with host Joe Costello as they tackle issues and challenges associated with starting, expanding, buying, or selling your business in today's highly competitive marketplace. It's time to start or expand your business today. And now, here's Larry Spiegel and Joe Costello. Hello, everyone, and welcome to AmeriLawyer.com presents Start or Expand Your Business Today. I'm Joe Costello, and once again, we're joined in studio by entrepreneur, author, and managing shareholder at Spiegel & Utrera, PA, Larry Spiegel. Larry, welcome back. Thank you, Joe. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be back, and I'm looking forward to helping all the entrepreneurs out there with their questions and situations. Situations, questions, we have got them for you today. And I know there are a lot of people out there listening right now who aspire to own their own business or get something going or do something in addition to their day job or something that gives them passion each day. All it takes is an idea, hard work, and commitment. We talk about it on each show, Larry, hard work and commitment. Yes, indeed, without a doubt. Sometimes, though, there's a hurdle or a problem arises, and that's where we come in. If you've got a question about starting, expanding, buying, or selling your business, give us a call at 800-520-7600. It works just like a voicemail, so anytime, day or night, give us a call, 800-520-7600. Just leave your name and your question, and we may use it right here on the show. You can also email us at radioshow at amerilawyer.com, where you'll find many additional episodes of Start or Expand Your Business today. Larry, are you ready? I'm ready, Joe. Let's go. First question, coming from Kevin. Hi, my name is Kevin. I'm calling to see what the there's in front of me as a prospective manufacturer of organic hot sauce and organic salsa and market them. Part of uh, what I have to do with the uh, agriculture, with the FDA, and uh, just local and state uh, regulations. Thanks so much. Really enjoy the show. Well, Kevin, thank you for your question. And I'm happy to hear that you enjoy the show. I'm going to pass that on to Joe. The question that you have, it's very involved and has a lot of nuances to it. I want to recommend a couple things. First of all, and for listeners that have this same sort of situation, it doesn't necessarily have to be the hot sauce. It could be some other food product or some other item that needs to be packaged. There's a magazine called Packaging Digest. There's a electronic edition that's on the Internet also. It's not hard to find. And you can subscribe to it either there or you can get a print copy. I believe it's free if you're in the industry. And it seems to me that you are because you're a, a manufacturer of hot sauce. But in Packaging Digest, there's a, a lot of classified ads that relate to packaging on the one hand and the production of items and bottling of items uh, for others. So in this type of situation, generally, what I see clients doing over the years is they actually contract out the bottling of their products. They work on the marketing side, and they develop their packaging through the use of uh, a packaging company, who has tremendous expertise, equipment, and things that you couldn't even imagine to help you come up with a great packaging idea for your product. Then also this idea about bottling. There are bottling plants out there that are FDA approved, Department of Agriculture approved, and they meet all state and uh, federal regulations. And it's almost inconceivable that you would embark upon the bottling of this product yourself. And you will see that the costs and expenses associated with this are not that great. 
yes, it does cost money, but it is something, if you look into it, you'll be able to develop your budget and see what it is you're facing as you try to get this product off the ground. Now, the marketing of the product is something that can be quite problematic. As in all instances, the selling of something could be difficult. But there is an opportunity here for licensing. It's something that you should also consider. Again, there's a trade organization, that, and I've mentioned it before on the show, that deals with licensing, and you can find them on the Internet. They have at least annual meetings. They may have semi-annual meetings because what I was thinking about to get started with your product, rather than developing your own brand name initially, maybe you would market it under another name that you had licensed. There are numerous names out there that are active in the licensing business that are also food related and uh, if you meet their strict uh, tests then maybe you'd be selling your products under their name which gives you a tremendous amount of oomph to get started with your marketing Kevin, great question, and I think you helped him cut through a lot of mustard right there, Larry before I could see him in his kitchen like spooning jars full of salsa and now he's got an organization helping him do it. I, I think those are the kind of things that regular people out there maybe not thinking about. Well, they have to think about them. Of course, it starts out by setting up their own corporation or limited liability company. You're always dealing through that branding mechanism. We talk about limiting the liability, but we're also giving ourselves a sense of togetherness that we know what we're doing. And this is the name of our organization. This is our company. And then we go to put the pieces together. The real entrepreneur spends his time doing these kinds of things. He's not cooking the sauce in the kitchen. Kevin, once again, great question. And if you've got a question, 800-520-7600 or radio show at AmeriLawyer.com. We'll be back after this with more of your questions right here on AmeriLawyer.com presents Start or Expand Your Business Today. Start or Expand Your Business Today. There are some mistakes in business that may cause the occasional headache. Then there are some mistakes in business that may keep you up all night for weeks and months at a time. Avoid those mistakes by seeking strategic business and legal advice from a team of attorneys ready to help you. Spiegel & Utrera, PA's General Counsel Club, can assist you with the tough legal and business questions at crucial times. Call toll-free 800-734-9900 to receive your annual membership and be entitled to get unlimited strategic business and legal advice for a year. The General Counsel Club can assist with how to buy or sell business, converting hobby expenses into legitimate business expenses, what are legitimate business expenses for tax purposes, tips on leasing a business location, whether for retail, office, warehouse, or industrial, leasing versus buying options for vehicles and equipment, IRS examinations, audits, liens, levies, deficiencies, and settlements of tax dispute. Knowledge is power, and knowing that Spiegel & Utrera PA's General Counsel Club is one phone call away may give you the confidence to succeed during the day and rest well at night. Call 800-734-9900 or log on to AmeriLawyer.com today. Got a question about starting, expanding, buying, or selling your business? Email radio show at AmeriLawyer.com. Listeners' questions may air on episodes of AmeriLawyer.com presents Start or Expand Your Business Today. That's radio show at AmeriLawyer.com. Now back to Start or Expand Your Business Today. Welcome back to AmeriLawyer.com presents Start or Expand Your Business Today. Larry, we got people out there hitting us with questions, and they're getting in the mix. They're getting into the opportunities that uh, are in front of them. You're right, and I appreciate those questions. The, the more complicated the questions, the more ideas that I have and can flow from there and that the listeners can learn from. This one's coming from William. William says, hello, I'm a returning veteran and have been hearing about many government programs for businesses to hire veterans. Are there any advantages to starting a business as a veteran? I have expertise in the security field, but if I'm going to be working, I would rather work for myself, says William. Well, William, like anything else, I would say yes. The answer is there are situations out there that favor veterans, and there may very well be programs right there in your neighborhood for veterans, but you're going to have to do the research. On the federal level, there might be money available. 
because you're a vet, and it will take some research. Perhaps through the Small Business Administration, you can come up with some ideas there. But your question wasn't about money. What I recommend in this situation is to to start on the county level where you live to see what types of programs they have available that relate to veterans. And I I say programs because we do know you want to start a business, but they may have other programs that may be of interest to you. So you look at everything that's out there. I believe that if you'll do that at the county level, you'll gain a lot of expertise and information, and there's no reason why you can't go to the next county in your area and the tri-county area, whatever it may be, to see what's out there. But I do believe there are things out there. I think the field that you're in is a good field and is one that probably would benefit from something that's out there. Now, the other thing would be on the state level, after I had experience on the county level, I might look to the state level for opportunities that relate to veterans. William, thanks for your service and thanks for your question. Moving on, this one coming from Ron. Ron writes, I have a roof and in years past, I would run an ad each quarter in the newspaper as the rainy season began. Then people's roofs would leak and they would call me. That doesn't have the effect it used to. How can I drive business when the effectiveness of my advertising has dried up? There are so many ways to advertise out there, especially with the Internet. I have kind of lost my way regarding what works, writes Ron. Well, Ron, you're not alone. I think that this is a very common situation for many entrepreneurs. The idea, however, is that we go back to this concept of a lead generation system. Our business will not succeed without it. Now, I was thinking about your situation. You had mentioned the rainy season, so there is a weather component. And maybe that information needs to be taken into consideration with your advertising. And I'm not sure what type of advertising you're using. And I've mentioned before, I favor saturation advertising. Well, what do you mean by that? I'm talking about where things are delivered to every household in neighborhoods where there's an opportunity to buy into a circular that's delivered to 80,000 homes or 800,000 homes. That's what I call saturation advertising. But I do believe that that will not work just on a standalone basis. I think it will encounter the same problem that you're having right now. And that's why I say, well, let's couple that with information that we may have about the weather. And then we would focus our advertising dollars, not just throughout the year, but just in those periods leading up to the rainy weather. And maybe using a larger ad, uh, spending the money differently than we had in the past. Because when you come right down to it, Ron, it's up to you to make all this work. And you're going to have to reinvent your lead generation system Ron, great question. Moving on to our next question here on the show. My family owns a retail business and we sell household items. Many of the items are detergents and chemicals for cleaning. When we begin to sell a new product, we ask them to add our business to their insurance rider in case someone is hurt by their product, say, if a child eats something they shouldn't. Can I be confident that if a customer buys a product from me that I will not have liability if the product is misused? Is there something else I should do to protect myself? Well, of course, you can go out and get your own insurance. But I think that you're the purchaser of these products for resale. I think that if you're buying enough product, you can insist from the manufacturer or the distributor, wherever you're getting it from, to add you as an additional insured on their product's liability insurance. Now, you need to go a couple of steps further. You need to get a copy of the certificate where you're added as an additional insured. And you also have to know what provisions are in the policy that allow for cancellation. So it wouldn't do any good to be added as an additional insured today, still have product around six months from now that you're selling, but have the insurance have been canceled three months ago. You would have to set up a system where you would keep track of those companies where you've been listed as the additional insured and when their insurance expires, 
so that 30, 60 days before that, you're already asking for the new policy where you're added as an additional insured. And maybe as an incentive to the seller, you would have the right to return any product to them at any time when they did not provide this coverage. It seems to me that you also have to have your own products liability insurance if you're doing any business at all. And I really don't think products liability insurance is that expensive. If you have a retail establishment, chances are you already have a commercial package insurance policy. And to add products liability is generally not that much money. Well, best of luck to you, sir. If you've got a question, 800-520-7600, radio show at AmeriLawyer.com. We'll be back after this with my favorite part of the show. More of your questions and Larry's final thought right here on AmeriLawyer.com presents Start or Expand Your Business Today. AmeriLawyer.com. Start or expand your business today. Form your corporation for as little as $104.95. Each corporation is complete and includes state filing fees, corporation records book, corporate seal, articles of incorporation, corporate bylaws, corporate minutes, stock certificates, preliminary name search, and attorney's fees. Spiegel and Utrera PA and Amerilawyer.com can also help you with assumed or fictitious business names, advising on legitimate business expenses for tax purposes, discussing the converting of personal expenses into deductible business expenses, assisting you in developing a service agreement for your business, answering your questions on the advantages of minority-owned business certification, explaining the differences between a corporation and a limited liability company, and the benefits of creating either a regular corporation, S-corporation, or a limited liability company. Knowledge is power. Order over the phone at 800-603-3900. That's 800-603-3900 or online at Amerilawyer.com. Got a question about starting, expanding, buying, or selling your business? Call 800-520-7600. Just leave your name and your question. Listeners' questions may air on episodes of Amerilawyer.com present Start or Expand Your Business Today. That's 800 800- Five two zero seventy six hundred. Now back to start or expand your business today. Final segment here on start or expand your business today. Joe Costello along with Larry Spiegel. Larry, the shows just fly on by. Oh, the time just flies uh, answering these questions and trying to solve the problems that these entrepreneurs present us with. If you want to pose a question, 800-520-7600. And while you're on AmeriLawyer.com, check it out because there's lots of great information on the site. Also, Larry has authored a couple of books, Charlie's Entrepreneurial Journey, which may give some people some direction. If they don't get what they need here on the show or on the other episodes on the website, the book, Charlie's Entrepreneurial Journey, definitely takes you from A to Z in terms of the business. Yeah, I couldn't recommend Charlie's Entrepreneurial Journey enough because in that book, you'll come see my principles and they're laid out there for you in a matrix. And I submit to you that those principles are very, very important for you to consider in starting and expanding your business. And we touch on many of them here on the show as they relate to the questions which we get, which we have more questions. This one coming from Reggie. Reggie writes, My business is advertising. We sell ads in several magazines locally. One is fishing and one is home improvement. My question regards billing my clients. Is there an advantage to billing monthly versus yearly or weekly? Also, if I'm able to sign several clients to yearly ad buys, can I ask them to pay up front with a guarantee of service? Or is it better to spread my income throughout the year for tax purposes? Writes Reggie. Well, Reggie, uh, you have a lot of questions there. A bird in a hand's worth two in a bush, so the sooner you get paid for your advertising, I would say, the better. I think implicit in the fact that you accept the money for the advertising is that you are going to provide the service, which leads us back also to this idea. Are you incorporated or do you have a limited liability company? Because it's that entity that's entering into the agreement with the advertiser, so that in the unlikely event... You did collect money for advertising but could not provide the advertising service, it would be the company that would be responsible for that and not you personally. So please keep that in mind. Now, the idea of the billing monthly, yearly, or weekly, it depends on the advertising cycle. It would seem to me that if you're going to extend credit, 
you have to decide on what the terms are going to be. So that if somebody receives an invoice from you, it's due and payable upon receipt. And in your accounting mechanisms, you actually give them 30 days to pay. After that, you consider it to be past due. Now, many businesses uh, do uh, give a lot of consideration to the billing cycle of their invoices because it costs money to put out the invoices. So uh, some businesses go for weekly because it's a weekly cycle. Others will do it monthly because they consider it to be a monthly cycle. The only time that I can think of where you see a yearly cycle is with a publication or advertising. We're used to paying for a magazine for a year in advance. If you're providing somebody with a deep discount, then perhaps they will prepay their advertising. And there are many organizations that uh, say to their customers, we, uh, we're happy to extend credit to you after we accept your credit application and our credit manager approves your credit. But for the first month, advertising must be paid for in advance, and we do take credit cards. There's all sorts of different ways to address this, and I hope I've given you some information. Reggie, great question, and thank you very much for that one. Now it's time for the final question, then we'll move on to Larry's final thought. I would like to begin bidding some larger clients. What do these large institutions like universities and airports, etc., look for when deciding on who to do business with? Or is it all who you know like everything else? How can I make my company, we are in food services, appealing to large clients? Writes Lenny. Lenny. Lenny, thank you for your question. It's not an easy question to answer. What I'm thinking about is... You say food service, but that's a very broad area. I don't know whether you're selling packaged goods or you're actually operating a cafeteria for somebody. But in any event, when you say larger contracts and then you talk about more or less semi-public types of uh, organizations like a university, an airport, a government agency, generally speaking, they all have some sort of a bidding process and they all have a purchasing department. And there could very well be some politics involved. We could talk about that in a little bit. But I would get on their lists to receive information about the bidding of what it is you're interested in. And I would be, after I did that, I would follow it to see that I did in fact get the information. Generally, these types of organizations are letting bids out almost daily, but for certain specific areas, they have certain times when they do the for example, food services. One of the things about bidding uh, frequently is that they put out the specifications for what it is they're purchasing. And sometimes a company can have a major impact in helping to develop the specifications for these large, let's call them institutions. And you may be able to offer your services to them in that regard without charge Because many times we see situations where the specifications are skewed so that only one vendor actually can meet those specifications and actually provide the service or product. The other thing is is that when we're dealing with these types of organizations, it might be very, very helpful for us to think about using somebody else to do marketing for us. Uh, when I see the thing about a government or a semi-government agency, I, I think about lobbying and lobbyists. And there are lobbyists out there who would specialize, for example, in trying to obtain an airport contract for you. There are people that are well connected to a university who may assist you in obtaining a contract. But you're not going to be able to go to these types with just an idea. You're going to have to have laid the groundwork, as always, as an entrepreneur. Know what's out there to be bid by doing that initial work and then knowing what you can provide and hopefully that it's fairly cost effective. With that in hand, and now we know the value of the contract, maybe we could hire one of these lobbyists or well-connected types to do marketing for us on a contingency fee basis so that if we're successful in obtaining the contract, we wouldn't owe them any money. Anyway, you get the idea. We need to take it one step beyond, like everything else, give more thought to it, and think about it like an entrepreneur. 
Lenny, great question. Best of luck with your situation. And, folks, there's a perfect example of the kind of questions we take here on the show. And that, unfortunately, is the last question of today's show. But it makes way for my favorite part of the show, Larry's final thoughts. Well, Joe, thank you. And I was thinking, just as I answered that last question, about the challenges that the entrepreneur faces today. And I want the entrepreneurs to understand that they must see all things as challenges instead of problems. And when you begin to see things as a challenge, the solution will not be far away. We put it in a different context. At the same time, the entrepreneur needs to overcome all fears. The quickest way to self-confidence is to do the very thing that you are afraid to do. So barge right in and do it now. Absolutely incredible final thought here today. Larry, great job as usual. And to you listeners out there, if you've got a question about starting, expanding, buying or selling your business or business or legal strategy, give us a call, 800-520-7600. It works just like a voicemail, so you can call anytime, day or night. That's 800-520-7600. Just leave your name and your question, and we may use it here on the show. You can also email us at radioshow at com. Larry, take us home. Well, Joe, as always, I hope that everybody is planning their work and working their plan in spite of all the obstacles they see in front of them. He's Larry.